Hi everyone, my name is Mike Ryan. Uh, I'm the Assistant Dean for Clinical Medical Education and I'm also a faculty member in the Department of Pediatrics here at the VCU School of Medicine. The following is a brief presentation intended to help faculty improve upon our ability to write meaningful learning objectives. Now I'm sure there are plenty of you who are asking the question, outside of a requirement by my course director, the medical school, the LCME, the ACGME, etc., why should I spend my time learning to write learning objectives? Do our students even use them? So the short answer to the latter question is in my mind an emphatic no. And I suspect I'm not alone in that sentiment. So from the perspective of a faculty member, if our students don't even use them, why should we spend the time creating them? Well, I would argue that we are looking at our students' distaste of learning objectives from the wrong vantage point, and that the entire concept of creating learning objectives has become a vicious cycle. Many faculty members feel that students do not use learning objectives to guide their learning. By having a poor impression of their utility, many of us spend a nominal amount of time understanding and developing meaningful learning objectives, which results in predictably poor quality of our objectives. Students then see no benefit to using these objectives and the cycle continues again and again from one course or clerkship to the next. Objectives then become a requirement rather than an ally in our teaching. So here are two examples of the same concept from my own specialty. The first is suboptimal while the second is a much better example. So if I were a student and was provided with the first learning objective for my pediatrics clerkship, would I use it? Absolutely not. It has not identified for me what the common pediatric conditions are, nor has it given me any clarity on how I will be assessed for achieving competency. Now contrast that objective with the second. The second spells out specifically the conditions I will need to know. It outlines that I will need to know the most appropriate management plan for these conditions and it states explicitly that I will be tested on my performance using a standardized exam. More subtly, the choice of the verb identify is more specific and descriptive than the more generic understand, and it clearly lends itself to a multiple choice type question which logically follows as the assessment method. So my goal in this presentation is to break the cycle of learning objective distaste. My hope is that providing faculty with the fundamental knowledge and skills required to write meaningful learning objectives, the overall quality of learning objectives will be improved for our students in the VCU School of Medicine. So as we will discuss, any lecture, presentation, or teaching session should begin with the learning objectives for the session. And that includes a presentation on learning objectives themselves. So at the conclusion of this presentation, my hope is that each of you will be able to, one, recognize the educational value of writing meaningful learning objectives, two, describe with 100% accuracy the difference between goals and objectives as assessed by a post-test, three, categorize a sample of cognitive learning objectives on the spectrum from lowest to highest, and four, construct at least one learning objective relevant to your lecture, course, or curriculum, which contains the six components required of effective learning objectives. So we will start this presentation with a general overview of objectives, including some fundamental concepts of how they fit into the larger scope of an educational session, a course, or curriculum design. Put simply, goals and objectives, along with instruction and assessment, provide the three vital pieces required for learning to take place. Our goals and objectives provide the foundation, instruction delivers the content, an assessment determines the effectiveness of the session or course, which then ultimately feeds back into revising goals and objectives for future iterations. Now, although commonly presented in the manner just described in which goals and objectives provide the foundation, it's generally more appealing to consider integrating our objectives with our educational strategies and assessment methods as outlined in this table. By linking our learning objectives with specific teaching sessions and assessment methods, a process which is called integrated course design, we can provide ourselves and our learners with a more organized roadmap of our lecture, our course, or curriculum. 
Similarly, this allows us to cross-check ourselves to ensure that our testing methods, for example, are well aligned with our objectives and vice versa. In these two examples shown in the tables below, we illustrate how each learning objective is explicitly linked with two educational strategies and at least one method of assessment. A technique that has become increasingly popular in recent years is to actually start from the assessment piece and go backward towards our objectives, a process that's called backward design. So this process starts with the question, what will success look like at the end of our lecture, our course, or our curriculum? By knowing what we are looking for and how we will know it has been achieved, we can then design educational sessions to provide the knowledge and skills to prepare for the assessment and then frame our goals and objectives to help direct learners toward those achievements. Before we get into the specifics of designing effective learning objectives, I want to spend a moment clarifying the difference between goals and objectives, which are commonly used interchangeably. So a goal is a broad statement of what we hope our lecture course or program provides, while an objective gives a specific roadmap to meet that goal. Generally, a single goal may have several objectives which outline the process required for our learners to meet the goal. For example, in my role as Pediatrics Acting Internship Director, I want my students to complete the AI experience with the knowledge, the skills, and the attitudes necessary to diagnose, manage, and triage hospitalized pediatric patients. It's incredibly broad, but that's exactly what a goal should be. So in order to achieve that goal, I need to create several very concrete, specific, and measurable objectives such as the following. By completion of the General Pediatrics Acting Internship, the M4 student will perform at least one effective observed handoff on his or her patients. Performing an effective handoff shows the learner one specific way in which he or she will demonstrate progress toward achievement of the ultimate goal of the course. So what makes for an effective learning objective? Well, they should be specific, measurable, and as we mentioned in discussing integrated course design, they should be intimately related to both our instructional methods as well as our methods of assessment. These characteristics allow learning objectives to clearly communicate our expectations to our audience, whether that is our learners, other faculty, or our accrediting bodies. So an effective learning objective must ultimately answer the following questions. Who will do what, to what degree, and by when? So practically, how does one translate these characteristics to a final product? Well, I would propose using the following template to help construct each of our objectives. So here's an example using that template. By the completion of the internal medicine acting internship, the fourth year medical student will outline an effective management plan for patients with COPD, MI, and community acquired pneumonia as measured by his or her performance during case-based discussions with faculty preceptors. So let's break down each component of the template a little bit further. The time frame can be stated in the individual objective or it's commonly used as an introductory phrase prior to all of the objectives. Most commonly, we want our learners to meet our objectives by the end of our course, our clerkship, or in some cases, a single lecture. Writing the training level clearly describes who these objectives are meant for and helps us distinguish between a new learner and a more experienced learner. The verb is the action that we are observing to what degree describes how much or how well we expect the learner to perform the action, the what describes exactly what it is we're looking for, and the assessment clearly shows how we will know they have met our expectations. Now a quick word about assessment. An effective learning objective does not necessarily have to explicitly state how the skill will be assessed. However, it can be very helpful to have this in the objective itself to help guide our development of assessment methods and to inform our learners. So here's another example using the template, and this one from a basic science course. By the completion of the Principles of Physiology division, M1 students will identify with at least 70% accuracy the major components of cell membranes as assessed by performance on a multiple choice examination. 
So we have clearly identified the when, which is by completion of the division, the who, which are M1 level students, a specific verb, which is to identify, the what, which are major components of cell membranes, to what extent, which is 70% accuracy, and we've also included the assessment method, which in this case is a multiple choice examination. So this is a specific objective. Students will know that they have to specifically identify the cell membrane components, and it's also measurable. They know they need to achieve at least a 70% or higher on a standardized multiple choice examination. Now one of the most difficult aspects of creating an effective learning objective involves our choice of verbs. It's generally recommended to avoid nonspecific verbs such as understand or know because they tend to be less measurable and also open to multiple interpretations. So instead of using these verbs, it's generally recommended to use very specific verbs which relate to the domain you are teaching. Now there are three commonly used domains, cognitive skills or knowledge, psychomotor skills or actions, and affective skills such as attitude. An effective set of course objectives should generally include at least one objective from each of these domains. It's also worth mentioning some of the less commonly used domains, which include process, which is essentially participation, and patient outcomes, which involves a change in a patient and or a population. So let's look at some examples. Many objectives at the medical school level fall into the cognitive or knowledge domain. Broadly, the cognitive domain reflects our learner's ability to think. Benjamin Bloom is famous for illustrating how learners' cognitive skills range in the spectrum from basic factual knowledge and understanding all the way to analysis, evaluation, and creation. When designing cognitive objectives, we should carefully select verbs which reflect the level in which we expect our learners to achieve. For example, recalling the most common cause of a disease is much less sophisticated than designing a patient-centered treatment plan for the same disease process. Well-written objectives should reflect the level in which we expect our learners to perform. So here's an example of a lower order cognitive objective. By completion of the neurology clerkship, the M3 student will be able to name the most common causes of seizures in the adult population as measured by performance on the shelf examination. So he or she will either know it or they won't. This is simple factual recall. And appropriately, this level objective is assessed by a multiple choice test, which is a very good way to measure low order skills such as this. Now contrast that with a higher order example. By completion of the neurology clerkship, the M3 student will be able to recommend an evaluation plan for an adult patient presenting with a seizure in a case-based discussion with a faculty member. A recommendation requires the student to evaluate the clinical situation, understand the disease process, the evidence for and against different management options, and ultimately create a plan. It's not impossible to assess this in a well-worded multiple choice test, but it may be more appropriate to assess it in the context of a case-based discussion with a faculty member or even an oral examination. Now a quick point of clarification, there is no judgment attached towards using either lower or higher cognitive objectives. Higher learning objectives are not necessarily better than lower order objectives. One simply has to be cognizant of the learner's capabilities and carefully select the verb depending on the level we expect our learners to perform in the time frame that we have outlined for them. Psychomotor skills are the next most common form of objective and they often reflect physical or performance based skills. Using the template, one may word a psychomotor objective something like this. By the completion of the surgery skills elective, the fourth year medical student will show proficiency in knot tying as measured by direct observation from his or her attending. So the when is the end of the elective, the who is an M4 level student, the verb and degree in this case are linked in the phrase show proficiency, the what is not tying, and the assessment is direct observation by an attending who can presumably assess the student for proficiency in the skill. 
Now somewhat less common but still important are affective skills, which again portray attitudes we hope our students will achieve. So here's an example using the template as well. By the completion of the Patient, Physician, and Society course, the first-year medical student will recognize the societal impact on the physician-patient relationship as measured by an evaluation of a reflection paper. So the when is the end of the course, the who is an M1 level student, the verb is recognize, the what is societal impact on the physician-patient relationship, and the assessment and degree in this case are somewhat linked um, which is common in an effective objective, such as this by implying an acceptable evaluation of a reflective paper. So how do we put this all together into a coherent set of goals and objectives? Well, let's use this learning module as an example. So my big picture goal was to provide faculty with the fundamental knowledge and skills required to write meaningful learning objectives thereby resulting in improved quality of learning objectives in the VCU School of Medicine. So the goal is broad, big picture, and it sets the stage for what became my objectives and my assessment plan. So my time frame was by the conclusion of this presentation. The who was each of you, and I specified a specific learner by stating faculty, and then each of my individual objectives included a specific verb recognize, describe, categorize, and construct. My first learning objective was effective, while the middle two were cognitive, and the last one, one could argue, was either a high-level cognitive creation or psychomotor objective. Because my first was affective, I chose to leave off the degree. My second one includes the degree. My hope here is that by the end of the session, everyone will be able to determine the difference between goals and objectives. My third one similarly addresses degree, and it's very specific about what I hope you can do now. The final objective is a high-level skill, which now requires you to take the knowledge gained in this session and directly apply it to your practice. It is specific. It asks you to be able to create a learning objective, and it has a clear way in which success would be assessed. It must contain the six components that we described in the template. I want to thank you for your attention and I wish you the best of luck in writing effective learning objectives. So here are some references which were used throughout this presentation and might be helpful for you to take a look at if you're interested in learning more about writing meaningful learning objectives.